Hello, it's Kathy Dixon. Welcome to The Math Reflective and thank you so much for joining me today. I started this YouTube channel because I was so inspired by a math resource that my school and district was piloting called Open Up Resources 6-8 Math. I'm excited to show you this video today because I made it for a couple different reasons. One, to share with you a journey of attending a math conference specifically for a resource that you're piloting. I think that's really unique. And two, for those that weren't able to attend because I know that it's a big commitment and not everyone's able to do it over the summer for either time or district financial reasons, I wanted to be able to share what it, a little bit of what it was like so that you would be encouraged and maybe be able to attend next year. So I'm very grateful and don't take that for granted that my district was able to support me in going to this. However, I was the only one in my district that was able to attend this year. And anyone that knows me or even you can tell by my videos, I'm a very high extrovert and I get energized by people, but I still don't love to go to these kinds of things alone. Those situations are hard for me. It doesn't matter how old you are. I feel a little bit like the middle schooler going into the cafeteria for the first day and wondering who I'm going to sit with. So it was a big step for me and a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I was so excited to go and go ahead and watch this journey. Hello, it's Kathy Dixon. Welcome to The Math Reflective. It is Sunday, June 16th, and I'm leaving for Atlanta to go to the Hive Conference. Can't wait. Okay, well, here I am at the Omni Atlanta CNN Center Hotel. And I'm on the 13th floor, and this is my room. It's a nice bathroom and sink. Got double beds, though I'm the only one here. And look at this view. Hello, Atlanta. Good morning, everybody. Day one of the Hive Conference. I woke up this morning and when I went to go to the bathroom, I noticed my socks got wet. So the floor is wet on the carpet and I'm having to wear shoes around so I don't slip. And I guess the air conditioner is leaking. So I did call the front desk. I'm gonna have to move rooms later. I mean, what can you do? I'm just gonna be so busy today. I don't know why I'm gonna do it, but I have everything laid out on my bed. So I'm ready to move rooms, but don't wanna lose that great view. So we'll see what they have in store. And I realized I was I had my camera plugged in last night, but it wasn't charging. I don't know what the deal was with that. So I'm only at like 22%. So life of a newbie vlogger. Catch you later. Okay, we're making an anchor chart on using the notice and wonder routine. And we're talking about reminders, adaptations, ideas to try, ahas, takeaways, illustrations, and connections, and how we can use purposeful color with the notice and wonder routine. Sorry, I keep looking over there, but it's all written down on a chart and I don't wanna miss it. And I'm making new friends and enlarging my professional learning network and it's awesome. Hello, it's been such a long day. It's about 6.30 and Marion Dingle is about to speak downstairs. So I'm gonna run downstairs, but I just wanted to update you with, with what's happened with my room and everything. So we didn't get done with sessions till about five o'clock today. And I went down to the desk and I had a little bit of difficulty with the room change, but it's all worked out now. And there, there's an excellent employee for the Omni Hotels that took care of me. And they gave me $60 food and beverage credit and took care of my bags. I'm in my new room now, a king bed now instead of two doubles. And I have the same amazing view. And now I'm on the 17th floor instead of the 13th floor. So excellent experience. And I'm so excited about all the cool things that happened today, but I'll talk about it later. <laughs>
Be sure to watch the entire video because there is a part where I reflect on the two and a half days of attending the workshops and sessions. And I have three things that I wanted to talk about as far as the big takeaways. And those are share, synthesize, and shine. So stay tuned so you know what I'm talking about. Good morning, Atlanta. It's Tuesday, June 18th. Ready for another day at Hive Atlanta 2019. Of course, first things first, got to get some coffee. Well, good morning. I'm all set and ready to go downstairs. I'm going to go get a little protein this morning. Yesterday, they had delicious light breakfast with whole grain croissants and peach marmalade, but I need some eggs. So I'm going to go get some eggs first, and then I'll be all excited and ready and energized to learn and share more ideas today. See, day one started about 7.30 in the morning, um, right outside of the main ballroom. They had a light breakfast, which was a beautiful spread. They, then we went into the ballroom for the opening session and keynote speakers. So what happened there is we had Phil Darrow, who is one of the three authors of the Common Core Math Curriculum, speak. And then we also had Silas Kolkarni, I think I'm saying his name right. He's president of the Teaching Lab, which talks about a different kind of professional learning that's done with students and teachers together. And then they're able to go and reflect, which is something I definitely want my district to look into for us this coming year. I love the idea of professional learning being more like a learning lab and I probably will make a video on that later. We also had Brooke Powers, who's the community manager for Open Up Resources, and she introduced Jessica Slowerski, who is the CEO of Open Up Resources. So everyone kind of got us inspired and excited and engaged in thinking about how we're going to spend our time in the next couple of days. After the opening speeches, we went into separate rooms. So for the community pathways, we broke up by grade level. So sixth grade stayed together in a room, seventh grade and eighth grade, and those were led by our lead learners and they were incredible during the three days. During the session before lunch on the first day, we worked a lot on talking about instructional routines and math language routines, specifically the info gap routine, which we feel everyone kind of agrees that that's the most difficult one to do with students and teachers even are a little bit confused by it. So we did a lot of role playing with that. We made an anchor chart with that and we did a card sort um, about different instructional routines and math language routines. And then we broke out into groups in our sixth grade room and each group had one instructional routine they were in charge of. And we wrote about different things. I talked about it earlier in the video about all the different ways that we thought about adaptations, ahas. And then we reflected our work on anchor charts all around that room at the hotel and then because we like to synthesize from everything that we learned and then revise our thinking you, when we use open up resources, we walked around with sticky notes and added to or revised or edited the anchor chart. Then it was time to go to lunch and I you know, had a table that I was sitting with, but I didn't really follow anyone out. I just kind of followed the mass group and everything for lunch was set up beautifully. The hotel did a very efficient job. They had several stations of food and they got people in lines quickly. And within 20 minutes, everyone was sitting down and eating. I thought that was very well run. And the food was, oh my gosh, it was delicious. A lot more food than I would have anticipated. The first day was a fajita style buffet. Of course, everything had some Southern flair to it. So there was definitely way more than enough food. And there's always a special dessert each day. The food was fantastic. And they already had iced tea at the tables. And then you could ask for water. So it was very, very efficient. Well, I kind of looked around and sat at a table where I saw um, different groups of people sitting and met some really wonderful teachers, some with the ELA, some with the math portion. And then a woman sitting next to me says, she kind of nudges me and she says, I think that guy that just sat down at our table is the one who spoke this morning. 
And then I look over at him and yes, it's Phil Darrow who sat at our table. I mean, I felt like I was meeting a math celebrity in a way. I could have stayed and talked to him during the whole lunch. So bottom line is sometimes you get blessed when you don't know anybody and you go sit at a random table because then you have somebody like that with all that experience and wisdom about teaching, about rigor of curriculum. We were asking him questions. It was amazing. I really enjoyed talking to him. And then you will never guess what happened. I was starting to tell the table about how much I've loved this resource and how I started a YouTube channel. As soon as I said YouTube channel, he pulls out his phone. He goes, oh, what's it called? And I thought he was looking it up. Well, later I saw that he had subscribed to my channel. I'm going to put the little graphic up here. Phil Darrow subscribed to my YouTube channel. Now, it was a great day just because of that, but that was only lunchtime. So then after lunch ended at one, I think we had an hour for lunch, we went back to our session um, with our community pathway. Part of the afternoon was set up for an ed camp style session. And that's basically where teachers sign up to talk or do like little mini presentations. And then, so what they did at Open Up is they put an anchor chart there at the beginning of the day and they talked about it. And they said, if anyone has anything to share to sign up and put a title, you can either choose to do it in front of the whole group or you could do it in small groups. And we had also gotten an email about that too. So I did prepare a little bit. It said you didn't have to have slides. I put a couple slides together. I had asked one of my colleagues for an idea of what she thought I should share. I had written down for a small group presentation, standards-based grading and cultivating conversations with open up resources, thinking maybe I'll just casually talk to a couple different people. However, there were not a ton of people who signed up for the EdCant session. Sarah Martin had signed up to do a whole group session and she presented to us on different options for review, um, different things that she had compiled from other teachers, and she is awesome. So you should definitely check out her blog, Math is a Journey, because she did reflect on Hive already also and she put it on Facebook. I'll go ahead and put the link to her blog in the description below this video. So after that, it was time for the small breakout sessions, but there were only three others remaining. So Brooke did a quick pull of the class routine and people went separate ways and whoever was left was going to be for the standards-based grading and cultivating conversations. I'm kind of looking around and that was me. So, I mean, I think it was 30 to 40 people. I did not expect, I wasn't ready to do a presentation, but it was very interesting and exciting for me to step out of my comfort zone with a microphone and be able to talk to the people at the Hive Conference. And it was really exciting at the end of the day. And it was more of an exchange. And I talked about how I've shifted um, my team and I at our school, how we've shifted homework practices, how we grade and deal with homework. And then we talked about learning walks that our district did with math um, people from Better Lessons towards the end of the year. And what they found is that because of the open up resources and the inquiry based learning that we're doing, our students are talking more about math than they ever have before. But they also notice that they're not truly building knowledge and constructing knowledge together using effective questioning techniques. So we know that's an area we want to grow in next year. So I wanted to share that and then share a link with some question stems that people could possibly use. I will link that also below that mini presentation that I did. So then we went to listen to Marion Dingle talk and she was amazing. I, it, her presentation was called It's Time and she had so many salient points that I can't even go into them right now. Um, after that, I had about an hour to go back to my hotel room and just chill a little bit and then there was an optional live Twitter session. So in thinking about all that, that is my first takeaway was share. There was a lot of sharing going on by some experts in the field and also by all the teachers. That's what was so cool about being at Hive is the collaboration and the exchange of ideas. And it's easy to, when you're in a room like that and you start talking about, oh, I do it this way, I do it this way, to feel like, oh wow, I'm not doing it right, or this is better, or is the way I grade wrong? And I think Brooke Powers did a wonderful job of reminding us, like. These are topics that we could debate and discuss and come up with all different ways to do things that we're already doing great work. We don't need to feel bad about how we do something that we're all working really hard for our students and that we need to keep that at the forefront of our mind. So the sharing was the first big takeaway. After lunch, we dug deeper into synthesis and what that part of the lesson is supposed to be like. And after listening to Phil Darrow talk about it a little bit in his opening speech, and then dive deeper in the community pathway session, I think the takeaway we all took was you cannot skip the synthesis. It's almost better to skip the cool down over the synthesis. And Brooke put it in such a great quote 
Um, I believe I tweeted it out about how skipping the synthesis is like skipping at the end of a movie, at the last 15 minutes of a movie. And then the next day, we watch a whole different movie. And even though it's on the same topic, it's a different movie. And we never finish the other one. So teachers, if there's anything I can pass on to you, it's don't skip the synthesis. And also another thing I learned was that there are different types of synthesis. And if you pay closer attention, or if you pay close attention to the way it's worded, you can kind of pick up on that. And I think that's something I wanna focus on more next year with my team, is how can we really do a better job with the synthesis? Okay, now that takes me to day two of the conference. So on day two, we went really deep into the five practices. We watched a YouTube video by a professor whose name is Dr. For Christopher Childs, and he has his own YouTube channel called Mathematics Mixtape Series. You've got to check it out. I will put that link down below. And he does a, he's a real cool guy, and he talks about the five practices and how important they are. And we definitely went through that deeply, and we worked with a partner on a task, and we worked on really analyzing the five practices, anticipating how students would respond and their different representations. And the best way to do that as a teacher is to do it yourself. So we went through that and then Martin projected different methods um, up on the screen. And one cool thing that he did was he talked about how putting the child's name next to the representation. So if we're writing it on the board or we're displaying student work, putting their name there so that they have that ownership. And I have to admit when he put up the method that I was using and he wrote Kathy next to it, it made me feel really good inside. So that's a great tip too that I'll take away from this conference. So as we were filling out, we had a graphic organizer where we were trying to come up with pocket questions. Like if a particular group of students were struggling, what kind of questions could we use to prompt them to dig a little bit deeper and continue on with whatever method or another method? And then also students that were doing certain methods successfully, what kinds of questions would we get them to do to synthesize what they were doing? That was challenging and really good work. And what, we, what came out of that is documents that hopefully Brooke now will be able to look at and, and possibly revise a little bit. And then the hope is that she's gonna be able to add them to the community resource link that's at the bottom of each lesson. So we worked on different tasks and for sixth grade for our group, but the other groups, the seventh and eighth grade group were working on tasks as well for specific units and specific lessons. And hopefully now those will become a working resource for others to use. And that is what's so great about this sharing and this collaborating. We've got the Facebook site, people joined Twitter for the first time over this conference. It was just really exciting and you felt like you weren't alone. And things that are really difficult and a struggle but worth it, it's so much better when you're doing it and you're not alone. Later in the afternoon on day two, we had another question and answer session. So people were really able to either write down questions, um, share ideas, or ask questions right then and there on the spot. And that was really helpful. I felt like we could have gone on and on with that all day. After the second day, I think we might have finished about 4.30 and then we had a little bit of time to ourselves and then there was an event at night. So there was a cocktail and hors d'oeuvres reception and that was awesome. That was from 6.30 to 8.30 and that's when I walked around as the math reflective and did a little bit of interviewing that you'll see next in this video. All right, so my three takeaways again, just to review, were share, I think I've covered that, synthesize, 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 couldn't say that more. And then the third one is shine. And that was a message given to us by Jessica Reed Slowerski, the CEO of Open Up Resources. And it was awesome because I think what she meant by it is that we're already working really hard and we are shining for our students. We're collaborating, we're sharing, we're synthesizing what we learn, we're talking to other teachers all across the country. You know, we're committed to this work and it's hard work and it's rigorous and sometimes we're frustrated and we feel overwhelmed and we have so much on our plate, but we continue to shine for our students. And I really feel like sharing all this work together, synthesizing our learning and continuing our professional development will make us shine even brighter. And that was the third message. So share, synthesize, shine. Okay, I actually have one more really important takeaway for those that are going to attend Hive next year. So let's go through my three again. We had share, synthesize, and shine. And just to stick along and continue the SH or S kind of theme, I'm going to say number four is to shy away 
from wearing summer clothes. So you think I'm going to a conference in mid June and this was Atlanta. Of course, it's gonna be so warm. I can wear some cute summer clothes. I had skirts, a couple dresses planned to wear, you know, very casual, but summery. No, shy away from anything regarding summer clothing at a conference like this at a hotel. So it doesn't matter if next year it's in Vegas or California or something else, shy away from those summer clothes. In fact, you probably wanna bring a parka or a blanket. I think Brooke Powers was using the tablecloth several times to cover her legs and most of us were freezing. It's not a complaint. I had a wonderful time, it's just an observation. So takeaway number four, shy away from summer clothing. So on day three, there was a light breakfast again, and then at 8.30 started the final closing session of keynote speakers. Fawn Nguyen talked, her presentation was amazing, and then Caroline Hill talked, and I missed that one because I had to deal with a hotel bill problem, and they also had a math panel. The math panel was John Stevens, Tashima Price, and Fawn Nguyen, and that was moderated by Tammy Bowman. And that was really good. That was kind of a time where they could answer questions and the audience could ask questions. And then final closing remarks, of course, were by the CEO, Jessica Reed Slaworski. I left feeling very happy, very fulfilled professionally, and I'm ready to go. I'm excited about thinking about all this and reflecting on it over the summer. Well, that's it for my three main takeaways. Next, I'll show you some interviews with some people at the reception the night before we left. I started, okay. Take two. <laughs> All right, one of my favorite highlights here from Atlanta at the Hive is meeting all of the new math people and engaging with them and having new people across the country. And then also, I actually just started my first Twitter account. So I think that the biggest takeaway was the lesson synthesis and how important that was. I think that was a huge learning for me. I think it's something that we all forget or run out of time to do. So that was huge to not skip it, don't miss the end of the movie. And then also just the community connections that I've made through people that I can contact at any moment, I think, on email, texting, Facebook, Twitter. We have so many connections across the country of people that are implementing this and what they're doing and seeing what we can do also to improve our practice. I have really enjoyed all the collaboration that I've seen between educators who are just trying to do best for their students. Hi. Just do it. So before I came on this trip, I said to myself, man, if there's one thing I really need to learn about, it's how to synthesize better. And lo and behold, that's what we worked on, synthesizing, yeah. The best part of Hive is definitely my friends on Twitter becoming real life friends, 3D friends. It's very serious. Okay, are we ready? We're live. So my favorite part of Hive has been meeting all of the people I've stalked on Twitter for the past year. It is so exciting. The Math Reflective is one of the ones I've been following, so I'm excited about that. The collaboration that we've had in this Open Up community has been amazing, and I've gone up to people and said, I followed you on Twitter, and just the real life connections and collaborating with people across the country has made my heart so happy, so thank you. Let's, hi, I'm John Brown from Vermont. And my best takeaway from Hive so far has been just the connection points with other teachers, uh, learning the ideas behind why they design the stuff into the lesson planning that they do. So I've been using the curriculum for two years, but I haven't been using it properly. And so I learned a lot about how to implement it better. That's, I'm pretty excited about it. What is a number that is part of your story? A uh, number that is part of my story is 32, and the reason I chose 32 is because I've been teaching for 31 years, and after using Open Up Resources for one year, I love it so much, and I love my kids so much, that I've decided to hang in there in one more year. Open Up Resources, trust it. So the very best part of Hive 2019 for me has been seeing all of the teachers from around the country in the community track really collaborate around the curriculum. I think it's an amazing thing that we're seeing teachers really rally around an open curriculum like they are and share ideas and strategies and thoughts. I got teary-eyed when it ended today, but it's kind of like I said at the end of my session, this is to be continued because our work's not done. 
and now we're gonna take all of this amazing stuff home with us and we're just gonna get better and stronger and now we have taken our virtual uh, PLC network live and we've met these people in person and it can only get better from here so thank you all so much for coming it's been amazing if the kind of math classroom she could have is the classroom that you all are creating for your children. And I don't know how often you step back and take a moment to reflect upon the fact that you are doing really phenomenal work on behalf of kids in this country. And the thing about teaching is that so often nobody's telling you what a great job you're doing. Instead, they're just telling you all of the things you need to do better and all of the things that, oh, by the way, you also need to do this and this and this and this, right? And it can feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulders. And yet, I'm here to tell you, and I know Brooke's been telling you and the other gurus, and I hope you're telling yourself, and I hope you're telling each other, you are freaking awesome. If you made it to the end of this video, thank you so much for sticking with me on this journey. Go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. I will be doing a lot more videos in the future, specifically with different math language routines, instructional routines, and I also do general videos about my teaching practices. There's more information down below if you want to follow me on Instagram or Twitter or on Teachers Connect, and I look forward to learning and talking about teaching along with you. Are you ready for more?